this talk is about a, a little project of mine that started um, now quite a while ago. Uh, we're going to see that. And um, the the goal is to make NetB the NetBSD kernel uh, boot fast and as fast as possible. And uh, it implies quite some uh, different techniques. Uh, a lot of the work that uh, has been done is this, in this project uh, has been borrowed for, from a, a well-known uh, BSD person called uh, Colin Percival. I don't know if you were in the room, Colin. Uh, but um, yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, your, your name is going to pop up quite quite a bit during the during the, the presentation. So let's move on. So I am uh, Emil. Uh, I'm from uh, Valencia, Spain. I, I live there. I was born in France and uh, moved to Valencia, Spain, uh, a, a beautiful city. Uh, I'm uh, freelance with the little icon that comes with it. And the reason why I'm not with you today physically is because I am uh, uh, really afraid of flying. I know it sucks. I know it's uh, stupid. I know all the stats. But I I can't when when I when I have the choice I I prefer not taking uh, a plane. So uh, as I was offered the possibility to do it uh, uh, remotely, well I I, I took it. Um, I'm a NetBSD user uh, since 1998. Uh, I can remember that uh, that day very well um and i have the the honor and the chance to be an nbsd committer since 2009 um with you know like i i guess um uh, every con uh, open source con contributor with ups and downs i've been off quite a bit um and i'm the original author of the Packaging package manager, which is now uh, um, uh, taken care of uh, by Jonathan Perkin, which is doing an amazing job in, in like um, way better than I than I did in uh, following packaging's life. Which uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, packaging's a package manager that that not only works for NetBSD, but also, uh, well, pretty much a, a, any uh, Unix-like or Linux system uh, existing. Uh, uh, Jonathan uses it, for example, in, 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 in OS X. So that's, that's it for me. Now into the project. So what's, what it is about? Um, as long as I can remember, and I have not uh, written down all the projects uh, evolving around this subject I've worked in, but as long as I can remember, I've always been passionate about making NetBSD small, um, fast and small. Uh, the, the, the first project uh, I, I can remember was the NetBSD Live Key a, a small project. I think I have it. Yeah, uh, it's not even on, online anymore. I I, I just uh, uh, found it on on Web Archive, and it was a, a project that you know, was meant to to boot NetBSD from a a an, an USB key, a rather small USB key, and uh, and I did it in two thousand and six. Later on, on two. 2016, yes, uh, 10 years later, I, I worked on a, on a small project called Sailor, uh, which is basically a, a kind of, of a mix between a Docker and a CH root. Uh, what Sailor does is that it creates a very, very minimal um, image uh, to, to, to boot from. And uh, the idea behind this is um, it's not it's not like BusyBox nor Docker or to some extent more like Docker. Um, like if you create a a, a sailor, what what I called sh a ship, um, 
it, it will only be populated with the libraries and binaries you need. Let's, I mean, the, the, the classical example is, is Nginx. Uh, if you create a ship with Nginx, it will have Nginx, obviously, and uh, on, only the libraries that are needed by uh, Nginx and, you know, the tools that it uses and nothing nothing more than that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the, my, my website, uh, email.net, um, runs inside a sailor uh, ship. Later on, on 2020, between 2018 and 2020, I was intrigued by a project uh, launched by uh, AWS called Firecracker. I don't know uh, uh, if you are familiar with uh, this this project, Firecracker, but, but basically, uh, Firecracker, what it is, it's a, a VMM, a Virtual Machine Manager, uh, that spawns, that launches a, a, a well, obviously, they, they, they focused on, on Linux and it, it can start a Linux kernel um, very quickly. I didn't, at that, at, that mo at that point, I didn't know what that meant, uh, what technique was used and how did this VMM, uh, how did it, did it, manage to 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 load the Linux kernel so quickly and to have something up and running in like around 50 milliseconds that in intrigued me a lot um and then i understood that firecracker was nothing more than a lightweight qmu qmu uh written rust because I, as you know, everything now must be written, rewritten in Rust. Um, and well, at the end of the day, it did. It seemed to do a, a pretty good job. Um, AWS uh, is using it in uh, their uh, serverless uh, environment, uh, and basically, what 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 it provides is a way to isolate uh work i mean workloads like previously uh docker but in a more secure way in the, in in the way that you you are under the control of a specific uh kernel and so with a specific uh virtual memory and normally you 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 it's like more secure than uh sharing the same the same kernel uh across all or images, or, or, or pods, or containers. So what I wanted to achieve was to, uh, like digging uh, the hole, uh, I, I understood that um, the way the Linux kernel could, could boot so, so, so quickly uh, was to use something like the dash kernel um, flag from QMU. I don't know if you are familiar with this, but you can uh, load a Linux kernel uh, with the dash kernel uh, flag from QMU. That means that you don't have to go through, you know, all the BIOS initialization and so on. It just magically load the kernel. I didn't understand what that meant at that point. So uh, I began to, to, to dig deeper and I realized that NetBSD, the NetBSD kernel could also be called via the dash kernel parameter from QMU, but only the, uh, 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 the 32-bits version of the kernel. So I didn't really understand why. And then digging a bit more, understood that only the 32 bits kernel uh, on NetBSD has the multi-boot uh, feature, which makes it pos possible to boot via uh, this uh, this uh, flag. So I, I did a, a, a small a small project in 2020 called Fake Cracker, um, which basically was to rebuild 
a an NetBSD uh, uh, 32 bits kernel with very very few drivers and make it boot in like 100 200 millisecond I was quite happy about it but obviously there was this um, huge limitation which was uh well everything everything was going uh 34 bits and i mean this kernel was 32 and even if it was able and it is able to run you know most modern workloads i mean it, it's not it's not really serious so um i began to read a little bit more about how um the Linux kernel first uh, was able to boot in 64 bits. Uh, there was a, a, a transition uh, and uh, I, I created a, a small uh, project called Make Small MB for Make Small and BSD, uh, which are actually what, what it does and what it did because it, it's not relevant anymore today. But what it what it does is that it trims up uh, the uh, a, a net BSD binary kernel uh, using a small hack. You don't you don't have to rebuild it. It trims up uh, uh, every unused driver uh, when you are booting a net BSD kernel in a in a in a virtualized environment, and so you are able to boot a net BSD binary official kernel in like 100, 200 millisecond. Uh, instead of uh, many many seconds, only by uh, wiping all the all the references to to the driver in the binary uh, kernel. But this is more uh, fun and a hack than anything else. And then, and then came Colin, <laughs> and then came came Colin and his posts about booting FreeBSD from Firecracker. I was really intrigued how, what, what was he using? How did he do it? I mean, FreeBSD is not that far from NetBSD. Probably I can steal some piece of code and make it work in, uh, in a couple of uh, hours. Yes, I am very, I, I'm a very naive man. You, you, you'll see in, in this presentation that, that I am very naive. Uh, and so I began reading uh, Colin's papers. And I understood that Colin use, used used uh, a, a, a feature called PVH. What is PVH? So... In the world of uh, virtualization, I, I won't go through all the modes because, because I, I would need like more than two hours for that. But um, the, 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 the best, let's say, the, as of today, the best mode is PVH in the sense that in PVH, you are able to use uh, the VT CPU extensions uh, either in the uh, oh yeah one thing I I I, I didn't mention from the start um, this is uh, um, aimed at AMD sixty four okay I'm I'm not talking about other architectures this is uh, one hundred percent AMD sixty four related um, and so yes uh, PVH uh is is a, a virtualization mode that that first can use uh the vt instruction from intel and and amd amd and because devices emulation is really um uh, uh let's say time intensive okay um it uses para virtualization uh to virtualize the, the the devices actually pvh uh, from my point of view is not I, I it, it it might sound strange but it's not virtualization anymore because um what what pvh does is that basically it it it, it can jump from your running host to a to a secondary uh entry point we're, we're going to see that in detail uh 
and it just i mean it it will run a, a kernel it will use specific uh, uh cpu instructions from from uh, your uh intel or amd uh, cpu uh vm i mean the instructions uh, uh associated with uh, vt uh, with the, with the virtualization technology uh but but this is this is not emulated this is really um uh cpu instructions so so in 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 the cpu instruction them, them t themselves you don't have emulations anymore emulation anymore and when you are booting in pvh you are using par para virtualized drivers namely you can you can use like vert io which basically what what vert io does uh is like exchanging data from user land to to kernel land uh, using a, 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 a memory mapping. And so you are not emulating anything. This is, this is the quickest uh, uh, way to, 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 to have a, a driver exchanging data from user land to, 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 to kernel land. So what PVH does is that first you, 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 you use the hardware accelerated virtualization, but second, well, second, you, you uh, with PVH, you, you use power virtualized uh, drivers. And third, one of the most important thing in, in this talk is that PVH doesn't require the, 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 the guest to go through all the BIOS initialization uh, of the machine, etc. What PVH does is that the host and the VMM either Firecracker, QEMU, Xen, they will pass to the guest the informations about what's going on on the machine that's booting. Uh, where are the uh, ACPI uh, uh, values? Where what are the the memory the available physical memory regions? And so on and so forth. What are the flags passed to the to the kernel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this feature PVH, I mean, booting PVH, uh, 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 booting a PVH capable kernel from QMU, is available in uh, Linux uh, from uh, 2019, and is available uh, with Firecracker uh, on. FreeBSD 14. Um, Colin, if anything I say is uh, either wrong or bullshit, just tell me. <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about? We're talking about a, 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 a feature that's been uh, pushed by uh, Xen uh, quite a while ago. And it is documented here. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just open it. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, and basically, what what it does uh, is it it provides uh, a, a a secondary entry point. That's what uh, I was talking about. Uh, that you just declare uh, on the on the elf nodes of the kernel. Okay. You 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 will just say okay. Um, I am booting in PVH, and this guy here is my new entry point. Okay, it's not the the the, the classic start entry point uh, for for the kernel. And when you are booting in PVH and you and you uh, jump to to this entry point, some magic is done. And we're gonna see just after that what 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 is this kind of magic and I'm just checking the hour because I have the the habit to to speak a bit too too long so as a as a as I said many times I, I am um a, a very naive person and I I I read that NetBSD has Xen PVH support since version 10 so I thought Okay, this probably works. But if you start, uh, so just to, to make things clear, there, there's a, a, a big difference between 
booting a, a PVH kernel with Xen and booting a PVH capable kernel with QMU, Firecracker, and I don't know if there are any any other VMMs I'm not aware of. Probably. Oh yes, um, I think VirtualBox is capable of, of of doing it also. Not sure. I didn't try it, but I I, I think so. Uh, so booting with something else than Xen, a PVH capable kernel, is something different. And actually, if you tried. If you you can try just right now uh, to boot a NetBSD official kernel with QMU, you will get this error: error loading and unpro uncompressed kernel without PVH F nodes. Okay, that when you don't know about PVH, about how it works, about mm, what Xen did is a bit uh, confusing. But then you understand that they did that, okay? They they, they did uh, uh, um, propose a way to expose an entry point uh, to be read by the virtual machine manager. And actually, the way it was uh, 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 published on the NetBSD kernel was the same as before uh, Colin patched it and it didn't uh, um, expose the entry point in the elf nodes of the kernel. So what I did was really simple. I just uh, uh, simply uh, uh, copied what FreeBSD did uh, in the low core the S uh, assembly. I mean, low core the S is is the 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 most uh, obscure and uh, I mean it's it's the it's the, the the first steps of the kernel it's it's where the virtual memory is set uh, it's it's where you you go from thirty two bits to to sixty four bits I mean it's it's the it's the really uh, low level stuff okay and obviously this is where on NetBSD this is where the entry point is. Uh, and then I, I basically took the same patch and I moved it. I mean, I, 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 I've uh, ported it to, to NetBSD in a very simple manner, okay? I, I just take, take, uh, took it and, and, and rebuilt the kernel. And I thought, that's it? That was easy. Now, the NetBSD kernel knows, uh, I mean, the VMM, knows where to get the this new entry point with which existed i mean the the the, the this, this entry point start xen32 existed so i mean it should work it will work obviously okay so let's put the thing and then great success so mm -hmm. after uh, a couple i mean it was weird because it was waiting and my CPU was topping to 100%. So, mm, you know, the feeling like mm, something's not good. Everything's going to crash and probably the host. But no, uh, after like 10 seconds, uh, this was uh, uh, shown to my to, to in, in, in my terminal. Okay. Uh, but then, I mean, you've just patched the most obscure part of the, of the kernel. Um, and then you try to boot and then you have uh, a stack trace. Where do you go from there? Because I, 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 I don't even know at that point, I don't even know if what I did did anything. I don't even know where I am on the kernel. So what I wanna what I wanna see is did I reach this famous start Xen32 entry point or not? And this is where GDB uh comes to the to the rescue and this is where QMU um 
is really, really helpful because you, you can start QMU with uh, dash big S dash small S. And this basically start QMU in, in, in uh, wait mode. Okay, it, 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 it won't execute anything. It will just wait and start a, a, a GDB uh, TCP connection. I mean, a listening connection. And then from a, a NetBSD host, uh, you connect uh, to this uh, to this target, okay, uh, like GDB target uh, remote, and you are now plugged into uh, the 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 remote QMU that's stopped. And then, what I wanted to see is if I was there. So then, I print uh, I, I printed the the the, the address of uh, start. Zen 32. Um, not to be confused, at, at that point in time in the kernel boot, we are not yet in 64 bits. We are in 32 bits. So this there is not to be taken into, into account. So we get, we, we must uh, uh, put our breakpoint in the lower uh, 32 bits. And this is that. And then I could see that, yes, I was actually on this moment in time in the in the boot of the kernel. So that was um, uh, that was a first uh, victory because it meant that this actually worked. And it meant that uh, uh, this a uh, 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 elf node was read by QMU and that QMU actually jumped to th this uh, uh, entry point. I mean, this, uh, this part of QMU code is pretty readable. Okay, you can find it uh, uh, rather easily. Okay, so I'm there. Now, what's happening why why are we failing and why are we getting a stack trace and also I, I i spent i spent quite an amount of time uh trying to find out what was happening only to find that this innocent comment there was the source of all the pain why? Because at first, the the code in uh, in a uh, low core the s assumed one thing. It assumed that ebx was located just after uh, the end of the kernel, just after kernel end, the address of kernel end. Okay, let me show you something so so it, it's more um, visual. Okay, this is uh, maybe it's a bit uh, yeah it's a bit small maybe. Can can you can you see it? Can can you see the code? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a uh, local uh, dot s, and if if you see here, so. This is basically the structure of the kernel. And this is where um, the, the initial code of Locor assumed the information are passed from the VMM to the kernel. What I what I showed you here in a, in a Xen ABI is that the way uh, uh, PVH works is that EBX contains the physical memory address where where all the informations about the the, the machine that is is booting are located. Basically, this is uh, this is a kind of a, 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 a I don't find the the the, the word in English a, a, a tableau a table a table uh, and here you have. Uh, the the address of, of the address of the of the table, okay, and this code here assumes that 
This address is right after the kernel here. Okay? But the fact is nowhere here in the in the in the Xen uh, paper about PVH, PVH, nowhere it is written that EBX should be located just after the kernel. So what QMU does and what um, uh, Firecracker does, well, it picks a, a an address somewhere. And actually, it picks an address before the kernel. And what Locore does is preparing the the virtual memory when 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 uh, it begins to set up uh, the 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 kernel space, and the first thing it does when it sets up the, the the virtual memory is, yeah, let's zero out the bootstrap tables, okay, and let's get rid of the text, read only data, BSS, everything, EBX is there, okay, so this add no chance at all of working, okay? Because the data was not at the, at the good place. Uh, there are loops that are uh, initializing uh, all the, 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 the virtual memory space for, for the kernel and all. This had no, no chance of working. So what do we do? How can we make it behave the way we want? Well, there was a simple solution to it. It was to copy all the things where the kernel was uh, uh, expecting them. So with QMU, I'm not sure with uh, with uh, Firecracker because I, I, I did uh, my, my my initial test with uh, with QMU. With QMU, EBX uh, points to the address uh, 21C0. Okay, and you have this table at this address with uh, oh, quite a lot of uh, of information. First of which is the PVH magic, a magic number, uh, which is I don't know if it's written there. It should, but I'm not sure. No, magic. No, it's not written. Well, anyway, uh, you have a PVH magic number, which allows you to 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 find out that here was the 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 actual information about the machine with the, the, that was booting. Uh, then you have the version. Uh, you have the the kernel boot parameters. For example, if you boot the, the kernel with a dash v or dash z or uh, root equals to whatever, it's there also. Uh, you have the uh, ACPI physical address, you have the memory mapping physical address. Well, everything you need to know uh, to boot a machine mm -hmm. is in this table, which is pointed by this address, at this, uh, at this address. So what I did basically was to copy uh, all this table where it was expected, namely kernel end, and this is here. Okay, that's a first step on the right direction, and then I was able to go further, but I I I understood that the this code the, the code in NetBSD uh, uh, dealing with PVH was uh, Xen centric. Okay, so I add to uh, uh, following uh, uh, Manuel's idea. I uh, included a new VM guest guest type, which is called Gen Gen PVH for generic uh, PVH, where when we are in this kind of of virtual machine, uh, well, we get uh, the console from from the table. We got the physical memory. Uh, uh, address and the CP address from the table, uh, from the famous start infrastructure. This here 
is called the start info structure. And there are not so much, not so many, but there are quite a few if defs for the case where we are in Gen PVH. Honestly, there's not much. I mean, if you are in the room, you probably have uh, an idea of uh, what NetBSD is and how it uh, uh, how it handles uh, the, the 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 source code. And yes, the source code was uh, um, abstract enough uh, not to be really hard to modify for this case. And honestly, this took me very uh, very little time. Oh, uh, just one thing. Uh, I didn't mention, and uh, I mean, I, I must greet uh, the, the, the person who, who helped me. Uh, this here, uh, I found it with a friend of mine called uh, Grégory uh, uh, Cavalier. Um, and uh, I mean, without him, I, I, I wouldn't have uh, uh, find it or not in this, in, in this uh, uh, time frame. Okay. Uh, so then, for example, when you are booting uh, in PVH with um, uh, QEMU or Firecracker, you, you obviously you won't use Xen hyper calls. You, you will use uh, standard syscalls uh, uh, translated by, by your uh, VMM. So we change all this. And then drum roll, drum roll please. It boots. I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll tell you that this tweet came straight from the heart. When when I saw uh uh you know part of uh the the, 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 the kernel message starting and asking me about the the the, the, the root device, I, I I I really was happy. Okay, and then yes, it happened the 6th, uh, December the 6th, 2023. Uh, and for the first time, uh, NetBSD did boot on AMD uh, 64 using PVH. That, that was, a, that was a, 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 a great moment of my life. Um, so that was the first part. Now, with this, NetBSD was able, without, without what's coming, with this, NetBSD was able to boot uh, on QEMU, okay, using uh, uh, Virtaio uh, on PCI, and uh, remember it PCI because after that the, 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 there'll be something else. And in, it was booting in around two hundred milliseconds, which was, you know, fast enough, but not fast enough. Um, then. I took uh, the the next steps uh, that Colin took for FreeBSD, and namely uh, porting the MM MMIO uh, um, CMD line driver. Let me explain. Firecracker doesn't expose expose a PCI bus. Okay, it doesn't know about about PCI, so you you can't you, you basically either you mount either you boot it uh, with a RAM disk, which works perfectly perfectly well, uh, or uh, you have to use what's uh, mm -hmm. used by Firecracker, which is MMIO, uh, namely memory map memory mapped IO. It's a very uh, nice technique where you fake. Uh, 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 a device address just by my mapping a, a part of the, of the memory, okay. Uh, and the the way it works is that using the command line, it it may sound weird, but honestly, it's mm, pretty 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 interesting. Uh, using the command line, you will see you will say, okay, I have a first device uh, on Virtio MMIO, uh, which is uh, 512, uh, uh, I don't know if it's megabytes, I don't recall, at uh, this address, and it uses uh, uh, IRQ12, okay? And then after that, when you have the proper driver, uh, you read this line, and suddenly you, 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 you discover the driver, okay? 
and after that uh uh, uh Vue.io does its magic uh, uh it it plugs into this device uh and then all the virtual you mechanism come uh, come come into place so mmio is uh, uh uh excluded from any existing bus i mean it doesn't use pci it doesn't use anything okay so what i did uh this is this is a um, um a spot where the work in netbsd uh uh diverges quite a lot from the work on freebsd because uh, now uh the, the way drivers are, are implementing in freebsd and netbsd are, and NetBSD are really different so what i what i did uh uh is take the uh, openbsd's pv implementation uh which is uh, basically a, a virtual bus with mm -mm, not attached to, to nothing um and i attached uh the the mmeo cmd driver to it and uh the 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 code is one i mean uh 80 percent coming from uh colin's work uh, on on freebsd okay after that NetBSD was capable of using MMIO. Oh. <laughs> ah, what happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> you moved. I, I have the same kind of, of issues in my kitchen. Um, and uh, so uh, after that, uh, NetBSD was capable of booting using an MMIO, an MMIO device. And so Firecracker was able to boot. There, there's um, an issue regarding uh, bus DMA, which I will not uh, get into in this talk because it's still being reviewed. Uh, because I, I, I did something that made it work, but it's not clean enough. So we, we, we are working on it. Nevertheless, I'll show you how to play with uh, with my uh, uh, work at the end of the of the talk, uh, and where to, where to see the, the the actual code. Okay, so at that point, I was quite happy, but I was quite happy. I mean, uh, NetBSD was capable of booting pretty fast. Uh, again, between one and two milliseconds, and uh, I was. Talking about it on uh, NetBSD uh, IRC channel, and then Cryo told me faster. And I mean, I I I always take the bets. And also, Colin had those posts ab bragging about that is capable of booting FreeBSD in less than thirty in, in less that than thirty seconds and all. So that was enough for me. Uh, I, I, I took the bet. And so uh, I implemented quite a few, uh, I mean, it's not acts. I just um, I just found out where the, the, the time was consumed. For example, uh, we got the, the, the CPU frequency uh, from a, a calibration loop with, with, which was uh, I, I will not say useless, but there are more modern ways of figuring out um, the uh, the actual uh, CPU frequency. Uh, some of them are listed here. Um, this one is the most common. Uh, it, it's been first um, proposed by VMware, but right now um, pretty much every uh, VMM uses it. Uh, basically, this is a proxy to to the host's uh, TSC. Uh, I st I stole <laughs> uh, the AMD MSR code from OpenBSD, and I stole this really neat piece of code again from Colin, uh, who, in last resort, if we can't find uh, the 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 CPU frequency using a, a smart method, then we'll read. The frequency from the from the brand of the CPU, which I I found it I found it uh, funny and uh, and you know uh, interesting to implement. Um, I imported PV clock 
uh, from OpenBSD PV clock is the is uh, a way to read uh, the clock from uh, from KVM uh, because yes, uh, I, I'm 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 speaking about QMU, uh, Firecracker, and all, but they they at the end of the day they are all using KVM uh, in the background. Uh, so yeah, important uh, important PV clock, uh, and I use it when possible instead of uh, LAPIC, which is slower. And I basically killed every delay uh, uh, call in the in the kernel. There was there were two that were consuming a lot of time. One uh, in well in the uh, timer calibration, which I, I spoke about, and the second one was uh, in the in the com driver. Uh, which had a delay of 100 millisecond waiting for a uh, to, to 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 the for the com buffer to to be empty for if there is a character coming uh, before uh, the end of transmission. So yeah, I I, I I moved it and used it and used a a more convenient function which does not any delay. Okay, with all that. Again, Colin. Colin is everywhere. Uh, I mean, in 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 this patch set, there's Colin every uh, Colin everywhere. So to to have a, a nice overview of uh, what was happening and and what was the 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 gain. I mean, the the uh, the gain we had uh, on, on booting NetBSD uh, with and without the performance uh, acts. No, th those are not acts actually. Uh, modifications, let's say. Uh, I ported the TS log uh, infrastructure to, to NetBSD to produce this amazing kind of flame graph. And there you can see that before the work, we were booting the NetBSD kernel in 373 milliseconds. And after all that, around 20 milliseconds. It varies uh, between uh, 15 to uh, uh, 250, depends on, on on the load of my machine, because basically I, I, I'm running it on, on my own machine. Okay? So that was uh, uh, basically the, the, the end game. I, I, the, the goal was simple. I, I wanted to, 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 to beat Colin. <laughs> that, that was the only uh, the only aim of all this. Uh, and then a demo. Uh, the demo, honestly, uh, should not be very uh, long, uh, hopefully, <laughs> because hopefully. Uh, let me share. So share screen. And I want to share my terminal where it is. Where is it? It's there. Okay. So... Uh, Okay, so I have. Uh, oh yeah, let 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 me show you something before. Let me show you something before. Um, come here. Uh, where 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 is the share button? Oh, the share button disappeared. Bring your mouse down to the bottom. Um. Okay. Nope. Uh. Wait a sec. I'm I'm gonna get out of. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Um, yeah, I want to reshare the um, the web browser here because I want to show something. Okay, you see, you see my my brother browser again. You see demo. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show you. Um, yeah. So um, I I. I I've put all the PCs together in a in a in a small website uh, called smallbsd.org, uh, where you can fetch the, uh, uh, the 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 actual kernel that's uh, generated from uh, from my work. You will find there uh, the uh, um, the path to the branch I'm working on. Okay, it's on it's on GitHub uh, by now. Uh, and you can, you know, just fetch this kernel and, and try and try and try and boot it. This is what we are going to do right now. And so here comes the demo now. Okay. 
Okay. So you see my terminal? Yes. Yes. So uh, basically, I have a, a kind of variable set. I have a very small image uh set which is a, a it's a risk queue image uh and then i have this gigantic qmu uh uh, uh command line uh, which basically starts qmu in micro v mode which is the same mode as firecracker and a lot i, I mean this is meant to replicate uh firecracker okay the 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 options of firecracker meaning disabling everything okay and so if i start hold your breath and just because this is a demo it's slow <laughs> of course see but i mean there's a lot of stuff going on in, on my machine so see it, it comes from 19 to 31 uh 38 but see, this is a fast booting NeedBSD kernel. And I mean, I, I, I would have loved, I would have loved to have a a, a more uh, wow effect demo. But that that that's pretty much it. Just seeing a, a that BSD kernel booting fast. Okay, then uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm 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 following the timing. So now, guys, uh, have you got? Let me unshare this. Oh yeah. Have you got any questions for me? Um, it's a question. How fast is the shutdown? I'm I'm sorry. I I I I I didn't hear you. Can Can you repeat, please? How fast is halting the machine? Uh you mean you mean the 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 whole machine? VM, yeah. Uh let me see. Uh this is a this is wait a sec. Uh this is an uh uh air quote old uh i5 uh, uh machine. Down, VM, you're running. When you shut yeah. it, how fast? How quickly is it? If I'm you not, just HP, at the VM prompt. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very regular uh, VM, and and it's, I mean, it's uh, as fast as the the CPU can be because, uh, as I said, this is, this is not virtualization in the sense of uh the the 90s of the 2000s this is pretty much executing code okay so i mean i don't have bench on how applications are running uh, on on the vm because basically it will be the speed of uh any 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 v i mean i don't what 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 this patch set does is accelerate the boot of the kernel. It doesn't accelerate the kernel itself. Okay. You might ask, but why? What's what's the point? The point of booting a, a, a virtual machine fast is to provide a way, for example, to have totally isolated uh, containers and the fact that it boots in less than i don't know uh, 30 milliseconds makes it uh, possible to run uh, i don't know a web server a, a a database whatever without having uh, the 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 delay of a full machine uh, um, full virtual machine booting before that okay and not just relying on containers I don't know if I if I answered correctly to the, to the question. No, you did. Um, my context is by the test framework doing thousands of boot, run, test, kill. I mean, thousands. It's doing it constantly. So if you can chop 30 seconds off the boot, 30 seconds off the shutdown, 
you are way ahead because the test is just 20 seconds or so. Yeah. That's where I'm coming from. And so you've really sped up the um, boot side. But I, I just see people focus on that and not look at the halt. Like, okay. Ned's pretty, Ned's quick at shutting down. One of the other BSDs takes like 30, 40 seconds. Uh, yeah, right. You're right. You're right. Um, I mean, that's that's a good point. Uh, I didn't thought about it, to be honest. Uh, there's quite a lot of things that are happening, and I'm not, I mean, you you, you obviously know it. My hunch uh, is it's very far because you've got no devices. Mm -mm. Like these shutdowns are doing stuff from the 90s, and it's yeah. gone. So it's probably very fast. Yep. It may not matter because you may be able to just kill QMU and you know control AX or something. And then yeah, yeah. It, it depends. I can be dependent on the state of the disk. Uh, right. So if you're doing if you're relying on on uh, on doing uh, syncing data to yeah. disk, then well, you could just run sync and then build a VM. Yeah. Um, but you might also uh, not even have a disk device in this, this micro VM. Maybe you just talk via NFS or via something else. Yeah, it's talking NFS to be on. Well, so then it's a memory map. Yeah, so then no sync needed, really. Yeah. I mean, step two, step three. Um, one, one thing uh, is to be kept in mind. The, the, the micro VM concept uh, is not to... Mm, rely uh, much on on you know on the file system that's running on the disk. Actually, those are to be considered as um, junk machines. I mean, uh, like pretty much like the the the, the Docker containers. Um, so I, I would say that yes. I mean, you can just kill it. Doesn't matter. It it it. It matters if uh, you will use this machine as, you know, your working VM and, and yes, you want it to shut down quickly. But I mean, uh, usually I have my VMs running and I don't I don't shut them. But the, the way they they are used and, for example, in, in, in AWS uh, Firecracker, they don't they don't even they don't shut down. See what I mean? They, 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 they just kill it. Yeah, that sounds perfect. My observation using the beehive on previously, which is nowhere near as good, but um, which beehive using a nine, uh, nine PFS root file system, I found the best way, the, the quickest way of shutting down was just to, there was an option to hold to say, don't bother things and stuff. And it was quicker. And yeah. The small, especially if you've got less devices. And stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start cutting down what I mean, I I can't hear very well what's what's uh the the, the questions that that are asked. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I I I I kind of get that you you spoke about uh beehive and and uh, NFS an exported uh, file system, right? Well, what I'm trying to say is that if, if all the state is outside the VM. Yeah. Okay. I have a nine PFS file system. Then it's yeah, okay. okay. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. You, you also want to make sure you, you're you're not dismiss it doing anything particularly silly. So in, in FreeBSD last year, I was speeding up mostly the boot process, but also the shutdown process. One thing I noticed in shutdown is that FreeBSD would print a message to the console saying we are shutting down. Then there's a comment, okay. wait one second to make sure the user has a chance to read this. <laughs> to turn the, the machine off. So even if you don't actually need to wait extra time, you, you might be doing it if your other system is silly and in these systems you just say shut down process exits, VM uh, exits, and that's when you say it's shut down. Anything beyond that is too smart for a script. And uh, actually, uh, for those interested in in in, the, in this kinds uh, in this kind of, of workload, um, uh, I have set up a 
a proof of concept. Don't 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 be mad at me, but a, a proof of concept of running uh, a NetBSD micro VM in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Don't. Right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I ate it also, okay? <laughs> okay, I think we are on stage. Any any other question? So I'll, I'll give you once again, uh, I mean, if you go to the small, let me share the screen once again. If you go to this page, you will find okay. You will find all the links uh, and all the details on how to uh, how to set up all this. Uh, if you want to to uh, uh, have a look at uh, what's been done on the on the on the kernel to to achieve this. Here it is. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's on it's on GitHub right now, um, and uh, yeah, just uh, have fun with it. I hope, uh, like I said again, I'm 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 working on it uh, with uh, the guys uh, uh, from uh, NetBSD. I have still uh, uh, some little things to 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 manage, but I hope it will be uh, integrated. Uh, I hope for NetBSD 11. So that's it.